Hi, today I want to talk to you about personal learning environments, or PLE. Uh, another term that's sometimes used for this concept is a personal learning network. In essence, the personal learning environment is something that is deeply personal. It's, it's for you. Hopefully it's, it's crafted by the individual. Uh, hopefully it's refined over time so that it works out best for the person. So generally, no two people's uh, PLEs will look exactly the same. Uh, what is a personal learning environment? It's a space in which uh, the various aspects of learning occur. Um, and allow me to illustrate the four main portions of the PLE. The first part is what we call connect. In the connection sphere or area of the PLE, um, it's where you come into contact with new information. Um, it's an axiom that unless you're in contact or proximity or you're exposed to new sources of information, you can't learn it. Um, in order to hear a lecture, you have to be in the lecture hall. In order to read the newspaper, you either have to have it in your hands or go to the, the website. Um, in order to see the search results, you have to be using the right search engine and you have to be asking the right question. So in the connection realm of the personal learning environment, it's, it's, where, we, it's where we come into contact with new forms of information. Um, and oftentimes, uh, people think least about this portion of their PLE, and a little bit of effort here can expose you to a whole variety of alternative views on things that tend to be biased or more in-depth sources of information where they tend to be treated lightly or entirely new sources of information where perhaps the person just wasn't asking the right questions. Uh, beyond just being exposed to these things, I mean everyone knows you can be in a lecture hall and listen to the lecture all day long, but unless you have perfect recall of everything that's been said, you generally need to put it somewhere before it gets deep into our thinking practices. So the other, the next portion of the PLE is called collect. And we'll go right back to the lecture hall example. Uh, any student in the lecture hall writing down notes, that's a form of collection. So um, any kind of um, physical notebooks or even ones augmented with digital pens that might record audio at the same time. Th those are all forms of collection. Um, so, uh, so was an iPhone. A lot of times, for instance, um, I'll go shopping in a store like Home Depot and I won't know exactly what item I need, so I'll take a bunch of pictures and then take it home and I'll, I can go back and refer to it, retrieve the information, and, and see what works out for me. Um, there's all, there's all sorts of uh, different lenses you can look at these different areas in. Um, and among some of the most important parts of um, um, these things are you know, techno technological apps, uh, practices, sources, but also people. Um, so in the collect stage, this is where you put things for later retrieval. Um, with that in mind, if things, if you can't retrieve something, uh, let's say you had the infinity junk drawer, which generally I think everyone has some kind of place in their house where they put odds and ends. Um, you got to ask yourself, how effective is that in finding that one little odd screw or the tape or whatever? So if your collection mechanism doesn't have some sort of index or searching capability or ability to look um, look at items that were put there, say, at the end of last semester, something to jog your memory, then it's probably not an adequate um, mechanism for collecting. Um, the next part of the PLE is the reflection aspect. So for instance, in an online class, if we provide students with uh, an article to read, uh, they might be able to readily get the article. Uh, it might already be in the course shell or they might be taught the methods of uh, library research. But 
down in reflection, where where do they actually think about it? And in today's world, it has to go a little bit beyond um, a quiet walk in the woods, reflecting upon the contents of the article. Although that, if for people that don't have any quiet time away from technology and they can just think, um, that should be a part of it. But it doesn't totally take care of all the aspects that happen in the reflection stage. Um, Reflection, that's where people bring that information from short-term memory into working memory, and they, they apply some self-criticism, some analysis. They also they see how it, the new information plays out with already existing information. So, for instance, um, a scientist who has made observations may have a working model of uh, the way the physical world reacts or acts under certain situations. And they've made a, no a new observation and it doesn't fit everything prior. Well, th they have to think about that. Why doesn't it fit in? Um, does their model need to be revised? Uh, are they absolutely certain of the new observations? Uh, and reflection can occur um, online. Uh, you know, the, the, the idea, the modern idea of a Dear Diary uh, is the blog. And so people can um, type out what they're thinking. At the same time, they may, and I'm going to jump ahead and go into the share. At some point, all of this um, other aspects of the PLE really don't do an individual or society any good unless you're sharing it. Uh, sharing is a form of publishing. It's a, it's a, a form of putting your work out for uh, criticism and, and comment. Um, but reflection might be, uh, for instance, going through a, um, a journal article, selecting portions of text, and thinking about and, and writing down in words that you can review later how this how this bit of information or this new view uh, fits into the scheme of things. Um, so sharing, how does one share? Well, uh, any most online classes have discussion boards. So just that act of putting out new information or sharing your personal take on a um, a class assignment or some new source of information you found. Uh, it could be as simple as a tweet. Just uh, sharing with conference goers uh, some new insight you have on the lecturer's background or something that they said. Uh, so it doesn't, the, you can share for wide audiences and uh, small audiences, um, but the idea is that you're taking the efforts of your, your work and you're putting it out there to the community. Um, so what, what do all these, these are the major areas of the PLE. Let's look at what some of the um, actual instances are. And I'm going to use my PLE as an example. So I'm going to draw over the next couple of minutes here, I'm going to fast draw aspects of my PLE. Okay, so this is a very, uh, very loose, <laughs> but somewhat accurate view of what my PLE looks like. And I'm going to draw some rough areas here. For connection, I'm going to this one is a big one. I'm kind of hungry for new information. Collection. Reflection. And sharing. So 
So let me point out uh, some observations. I, I kind of think about some of these uh, different elements of the PLE in terms of technical applications or websites, sources, either sources of news, uh, different libraries, particular authors, uh, series of talks, um, news sites, uh, agency websites, etc. Uh, and then practices and methods. And, and practices and methods is sort of a catch-all. I kind of think that uh, if it's your practice to um, walk your dog in the evening, that might be a really good time for reflection. It might be a really good time uh, to call up a friend or um, uh, chat with someone who's walking with you. Um, so what, what do we do with all these things? Well, just doing this and thinking about, okay, so my connection is uh, largely, I've listed two search engines, uh, one big source of information, um, a couple social media based apps or websites. Um, the real value in this comes into when I think about this in terms of is my personal learning environment exposing me to enough things? Um, so is Google's algorithm for ranking sites and filtering sites, is that harming me or helping me out? Or is it neutral? Uh, so that's why I like to see people have at least a couple search engines that they use to once in a while compare results and see uh, what the information is being returned to them. Um, I like to also see people use some sort of social media in terms of uh, finding out how other people solve particular problems. Um, I think in any academic sense that journal articles are going to be important and in the classroom it's always important for instance um, to model what a, an effective PLE is for students. Uh, especially going into a profession they may not be aware of the eminent journals, uh, which particular conferences are uh, where most papers are rolled out, etc. Um, but also, it's important to model and let uh, students know and think about kind of like chance and random things that uh, can expose you to new bits of information uh, or reconnecting with uh, people that you haven't seen for a while. So the human element of uh, or a practice of going to a coffee shop once a week or every day or whatever it is. Um, People meet at coffee shops. They talk. You hear over. You overhear conversations. You see art hanging on the walls. You see new methods at play. You see new types of bread you want to eat. That things like that are, are really rich for connecting uh, and bringing in new information. Uh, the collection part of your PLE is important, and it's good to have students reflect upon this because generally students are are really good at taking notes, but then they don't know what to do with them. And so if that's all they ever do is take notes in class, they may need some help uh, in, in taking either better notes or, or doing something with them. Uh, if they don't make it a practice to reflect upon what their notes soon after taking them, then much of the content information from the lecture will probably be lost. Um, encourage your students to augment their note-taking ability by uh, using other devices. Um, if I had a face-to-face -face class, I would let it be known that students can take uh, pictures of the board as they will. They're welcome to record the audio if they will. Uh, you may actually do this for your students already by just making the lectures uh, available in a recording. In case they missed it, they could go back and, and look at it. Um, Digo is a, um, I want to mention this one because it's a, uh, it's an it's an app. It's a um, it can also be a source of information, uh, but I think they called themselves social bookmarking. In a sense, it's an electronic online version of the browser bookmarking system, uh, but it allows you to store bits of information, websites and pages that you visited, all online, uh, and you can get there with a variety of devices, not with the same browser. And the other nice thing about it is that you can share them with uh, groups of friends or people you work with. So let's say that um, a team is going to research a subject. They can 
put a variety of their collected information into Digo and, and share that within their group. Um, also, anything that allows you to grab text and make comments on it, uh, for instance, like Google Drive and Sente allow you to grab information and then write notes. And that's kind of a spillover to the reflection portion. Um, we, we have to spend time cogitating about new information. There, there has to be a time where we actually go over it. Um, and so any time, I mentioned walking the dog at night, any kind of quiet time, usually when you take people out of their element, the events of the day go over in their mind, that's a good time. Uh, if someone doesn't have quiet time built into their life, it might be a time to suggest it to them. So students, um, that's a good time like at the gym or cafeteria, etc. Um, just getting ready for an interview uh, will probably help you uh, reflect upon the material. Uh, so oftentimes when I work with faculty, for instance, um, getting my questions ahead of time in advance or reviewing their material and then and go into them with somewhat knowledgeable about what they're doing, um, that, that's helpful quite a bit. Um, the sharing portion, so I mentioned, and here's a good example of, I've put Twitter over here, and I have Twitter over here. Uh, some apps, some sources, some practices and methods serve multiple functions. Um, so I, th I think Twitter's a good example of something that it helps me share. So anyone who's following me or using the search terms to pull up information I put in tweets, uh, they can see what I've done with Twitter. Um, but I also can use Twitter to find information for myself. Uh, I've also used uh, people that follow me uh, during conferences know that I take kind of voracious notes when I'm at different sessions and I just type and take pictures of the, the person's presentation and note URLs and comments that either didn't make it to the slides or questions from an audience member. And at the end of a busy conference day, um, when I look at my Twitter stream, that really helps me remember what happened back in the, the talk and it, it lets me uh, think about it a little bit more. Um, but it also, I might, um, maybe I want to write something a little bit more, uh, more in depth, so I might have a blog entry based upon some Twitter comments and I'll use Twitter to share out my blog and my blog is there for the actual content. Um, not everything has to be such a formal publication-based process, though. Uh, a lot of sharing in the workplace and family just, just happens informally with, with people that you're meeting. So discussions is uh, definitely a part of um, the personal learning environment. But it's also important going back to the, um, what, what's best in a profession or professional practices. It's good to let especially students know um, what, what are the ways that are, it's typically done uh, to express and share new information within a profession? Um, so what are some things that you can do in a classroom? Well, imagine a classroom of, say, 20 people, um, and everyone had some sort of board or space like this. People can definitely learn by looking at each other's PLEs. Uh, they can find out, so for instance, someone might not... Uh, be aware of a particular journal uh, that I find very useful. Uh, just seeing that I've written down a journal or, or made references to it um, can be very useful. A lot of people who are new to using the internet might not even be aware that there are more than one search engine. So it's that just being exposed to information and inform, it's actually a form of connection to have people share parts of their PLE out and compare and contrast.